Hey there, it's Ted here. I'm working on a, a KMD44 and I got some questions from you guys out there on YouTube land. Uh, one of them has to do with an engine that is running and then uh, after a little while it starts to break up and then it'll actually shut down. So my assumption is it's probably inside the injection pump. Maybe something's going on here. So we're gonna look at that. It's this connection here, which actually connects to the injection pump. So there's an actuator in here that controls the amount of fuel. There's a position sensor to make sure that it's calibrated correctly where the actual pump position of the actuator is. And then there's a temperature sensor. So there are seven pins in here. I've got another pump over there on the bench that I'm going to show you and we're going to go over how to measure the resistance inside this injection pump to see if these components are actually within spec or not. So let's get started. So here's the pump in question. I've got the connector here and I also have a picture of that connector and the pin number so you guys can kind of look at this and hopefully this will help you be able to see which pins are on that connector. Without a flashlight and looking in here with a magnifying glass, it's very hard to see the numbers. So what I did was I took this picture so I can actually look at it. I also have the values here for the actuator, which is uh, pins four and seven. That should be 0.4 to one ohms. Uh, the pump position sensor, that's pins one and two. That should be 9.8 to 13 ohms. And then the fuel temperature sensor is the one I'm interested in. The temperature sensor inside the pump, if it does go out of specification, uh, saying that the fuel temperature is too hot when the engine's cold, that would limit the amount of fuel injection and that may cause uh, issues, runnability issues, and that may be one of the problems with the boat that I'm uh, assisting somebody with. So let's take a look and let's go ahead and measure these and see how accurate they are next to the actual book value. Okay, I've got my meter ready, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna first look and see in reference to this connection. There is one that looks like a raised plastic piece that sticks out, and that is here in the picture, and that is between pins four and pins three. So that's gonna be my reference, is to say that that is pin four and that is pin three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the first test, which is the actuator pins four to seven. So I'm gonna find again, this is the flat spot and that does not rotate next to the pin. So that means that this is pin four and reading clockwise five, six, and seven. So the book value says 4.4 4 to one ohms. And let's see what I get. So I get about one, one ohm right on the money. So 1.0 ohms between pins four and seven, correct? Yes, four and seven. So again, four, five, six, seven. So first test that works out. Second test is the position pump position sensor. So that is pins one and two. So if this is four, three, two, and one. All right, and I'm gonna read 11 ohms right on the money. And this says 9.8 to 13 ohms. So that works out as well. So I've got 11 ohms on that one. Again, in the room here, it's uh, about 72 degrees. So it's about room temperature. So we're gonna say that was 11.0 on that pump. Right, so last we have the fuel temperature sensor and that is pins five and six. So again, if this is pin four, and five and pin six. And let's see what we get. This was the one. And the meter reads 2.285K. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna range it. 
to kilo ohms because this one is thousands of ohms. So again, four, five, come on. That's five and six. So I'm reading 2.28K, so 2,280 ohms. And that is in specifications because it's 1.4 to 4.0, so 2.8. Now obviously, if it's colder out or hotter, that temperature sensor is going to change. But at this point, these numbers check out. Um, I will also go do the same thing on the engine and check those connectors and give you some good values between the two pumps. So this one is in spec. Let's see if the other one is in spec. All right, I've got the connector off the engine here and I have my diagram here and we're gonna look. And I'm, again, I'm gonna use that flat piece of plastic that's, well, it's really not flat, but um, it extends out inside the connector. The other ones are rounded of some type, kind of a shelf. Kind of one is kind of a ramp, the other one's kind of wobble, but I'm gonna use that one for the reference because that puts me between pins three and four. So pins three will be down here. Okay, first step is the actuator. So we're gonna to go to pin four, five, six, and six. Seven, and I read 0.7 ohms exactly and that is going to be right on the money because we're between 0.4 and 1. All right the pump position sensor that one is let me just write this down again four five six seven point seven this one is 0 0.7. Now, so this engine runs fine in the lab. It's been here forever. So this is a, a live lab engine that runs fine. So we're going to use this one. So we've done four. My hand in here to hold this. Five, six, seven, one more time. 0.7, that one passes between 0.4 and 1. The next test is the position sensor. That's pins 1 and 2. And that's 9.8 to 13. So that's 4, 3, 2, and pin 1. Yes, that's the correct position. And I read 11.3 on this one, so only 0.3 difference. So 11.3, that's a good value, it looks like. And then what I'm going to do again is I'm going to range my meter to kilo ohms so that I get a reading much like in the book. That one is going to be pins 5 and 6. So there's 4. Five is after the flat. Reading counterclockwise. Weird, the numbers are. They run counterclockwise. They don't run clockwise. So, um, where am I again? Pins five and six. Yeah, if I can hold it there. 2.17. Yep. And the other one was 2.8. So let's read that one again. So I read 2.7. I want to go 5 and 6. So 5. Come on, hold the pen. And the connector, there we go. And 6 in the center. So 2.17K instead of 2. So I read 2.8 on the other end, and this one I'm reading 2.16. So not very far off, but again, 2.17. All right, 
So there's our values, and we'll look at those and give you kind of a spread of what's good, I think. Uh, so that's going to be testing that sensor that's on the engine, and that's going to be the actual inside the pump. So we're going to plug this back together. And there's the flat. Turn that back on and lock it. And that's it. That's how that goes back together. Okay, I've got the book right here. This is the workshop manual. And uh, this is where I got those values from on this page to test that pump. Again, it says disconnect it and then test in the pin configuration. And it gives you those values. So again, you have the values for the actuator. So pins 4 and 7, a range of 0.4 to 1 ohm. I read 0.7 on this one, and I read 1 ohm, actually, yeah, I read 1 ohm on this pump, and I read 0.7 on the other pump. Both fall in range. This one was right on the limit of 1 ohm. The position sensor, uh, 9.8 to 13 ohms. Uh, this pump was 11.3. The other one was 11, so right on the money on that one. And then the temperature sensor here uh, was... The range is 1.4 to 4.0 K, and that's kilo ohms again. And that is at about 70 degrees in the room, 70, 72. And I read 2.8 on this one and 2.17 on this one. So a little different um, in the temperature of them. Unknown really why this pump was in another room, but it's not gonna be that much different than the engine pump here. Okay, so within the workshop manual, there really is no range outside of the static tests and probably around 70 degrees. Um, there are some temperature gradients here for sensors on the engine if you're checking the charge air temperature sensor or the coolant temperature sensor. There are ranges for those and they are different as well. So um, those ranges can be from around 68 degrees, uh, the charge air temperature sensor disconnected should be somewhere around 9 point, what is it, 5.8 uh, kilo ohms, plus or minus 0.8, and then your engine coolant temperature sensor uh, at 80 degrees is going to be, uh, actually, sorry, got to read this right, yep, 5.8, the other one is at 68 degrees. Uh, this would be the coolant temperature sensor. That range is at 68 degrees. It is 648 plus or minus 93 ohms. So I would say 5 to 800 ohms at room temperature, around 70 degrees for the coolant temperature sensor. So just to give you some more information about these older engines, these EDC engines and problems associated with them, so I've got the live engine lab here. We'll do some further tests. Um, I gotta harness it up, get it running, and then we'll see if the other values in the workshop manual uh, seem to come out the same. There's not that many tests for this, uh, for the sensors on the engine. There's only a few because this is a very old engine. You've only got the uh, injection solenoid, which is basically the stop solenoid that's on the injection pump. And I did read that value as well. That's a harness with two small connectors in the bottom of the pump. That is over here on the bottom. And the pump that I have here read 15.5K. Uh, sorry. That one read 15.5 ohms. And the book value is 14.3 to 17.3. So that one's on the money. Um, that would be another one I think I would look at just to see what that value is to see if it's high or low. I believe that that uh, solenoid is probably grounded by the processor. Again, it's another test that I want to perform so you get a better understanding how that injection pump is controlling the engine as well as how does it start, how does it shut down, and then our running condition issues with that. So that'll wrap up today's uh, video on how to, you know, do a little bit more digging and diagnostics on these uh, EDC 
GAMD or KAMD 44. So this is a 44B version as well. So if you like the video, hit that like and subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one.